Well, it's beautiful outside right now. A little bit cloudy, but the sun is still shining at about 12 degrees. But will you need an umbrella a little later in the week? I'll be back shortly with your full forecast. Right now, back to you guys. Fire officials say sometimes the easiest steps are the most important, and they remind the public to have a working smoke alarm in every level of their home. It's not only the law, but it could also save your life. Ford City started their journey to reconnect with the community just four years ago. And this project is literally changing the face of Drewlard for the better. For Mediaplex News, I'm Stacy Janzer. Traffic was blocked up on the EC Row Expressway this morning, following two accidents on the same section of the road. Windsor Police Sergeant Matthew Dasty says it caused multiple injuries. Are you interested in learning about what programs St. Clair College has to offer? This weekend, the recruitment department will be at Tecumseh Mall. They will be handing out materials and answering questions about the college's programs that are starting in September. If you can't make it, the recruitment department will also be at Devonshire Mall next weekend. So come on by and make sure you enter the draw to win some cool stuff. The Windsor Aquatic Club is hosting the largest regional swimming competition in Canada. The 2014 Speedo Eastern Canadian Swimming Competition is being hosted at the recently reopened Windsor International Aquatic and Training Centre. The event opens today and runs until Monday. It will feature senior, youth and junior swimmers from Ontario, Quebec and Atlantic Canada. Event planners are still looking for volunteers. If you're interested, contact the Windsor Aquatic Club. We want people walking through the alleys, uh, taking in the art, understanding the neighborhood at a different level, exploring the neighborhood. vision could be the cost. There was a time when students would learn off of a blackboard. Today the focus is learning on smart screens, iPads, iPhones and tablets. Computers, the internet, tools that have assisted many to find the things they were looking for. I did find some new grandkids last summer that I had never met, that I knew of, but I'd never found. Betty Martin searched for her long-lost granddaughter. She was her son's daughter, a search he worked on as well. She was my son's daughter that we had never known. And uh, she'd, she'd been looking, too, for him, but it, unfortunately he passed away five years ago. So she never got to meet her dad. On her son Scott's deathbed, he asked a nurse if she could get in touch with his daughter. Martin could not fulfill his final wish. Two years ago, she tried a different search. By typing in a name that I was not sure of, but I typed in the name, and it uh, led to an article with her name in it. And from there, I found her, my, my granddaughter. Typing in the mother's last name found an article about Cross Lake Ban. Clicking on the link, a photo came up. That confirmed it for Betty. She was very happy that I found her. She had been trying to find us, but uh, anyway, we had made several attempts before that, but weren't sure of what the name was by that time. Martin was able to reunite with her and her family last summer. For me, it was it was never an option. I've always I always saw myself as a father. I always thought, even growing up. I mean, even before coming out, it was always an issue. It was always going to be, you know, this was going to be a part of my life and nothing was going to stand in my way. Um, for me, it wasn't as automatic a thing as it was for Frank. I hadn't pictured myself as a father, um, mostly because of the demanding career I had chosen and, and all the training that went along with that. So I didn't see myself um, being in a situation where I would have made a good single parent. Um, and then Frank came along and he was very uh, adamant that he was going to have children. And for the first time in my life, I had all of a sudden considered that, wait a minute, this is something I can do because I'm, I'm not 
doing it alone. I don't have to do it alone. There's, there's help. Um, and so it all of a sudden became something that, um, that was doable. And, and, and that's what sort of made me realize, yeah, I, I, I want to be a dad. I, w I want to, um, you know, pass on my values and, and ideals and, and hopefully contribute something good to the world. The process started with finding a donor. And then once we have our donor, there was a whole bunch of legal steps to take. Um, you know, we each had to have our separate lawyer draft up a, oh, hi, hi. We had to draft up an agreement that she was giving us her ovum and as a gift. So no monetary exchange, no anything. And also that she was giving up all parental rights to whatever comes out of this. So after the harvest, it's actually called the harvest, then we had to donate sperm. Um, one of the hurdles there is that there's currently a, a ban on gay sperm in Canada. Yeah, so it was a very, I don't know, it kind of caught us by surprise. They have to quarantine sperm for six months, test us before, test us after. Anyway, this is a law that was written in the 70s and no one's ever bothered to change it. So whatever, another hoop. It was, it was one of those slow processes that yeah, on the one hand, it was it was annoying to have to go through all of these steps. But on the other hand, it was it was probably good that it, it it eased me into that whole idea of parenthood. It was a very almost surreal experience. You know, it didn't it didn't actually feel like we were going to be parents until all of a sudden we we saw the baby. We saw Luca for the first time, and I and I looked in. His face, and that's when it started to hit home for me. It was in that instant that I looked at his face. I knew my life changed for the better forever. There, there are new heights of joy in my life that I did not know could exist. There are also new depths of fatigue in my life, um, and, and and it is, it is definitely a, a change in the way you think, the way you act. Uh, everything I do has a different focus to it. Definitely, like your mindset changes. Everything is about yeah. the baby. It's like the first and foremost thing in your mind all the time. It's all about you, baby. But it's been, it's been wonderful. I wouldn't trade it for the world. It's, it's an understatement to say life has changed. Shopping across the border may start costing you more money. Mm, it's usually about 20%. It all depends on what you're purchasing. Earlier this week, the media obtained a briefing note for the Prime Minister. The note says border agencies waive duties and taxes when the value of goods is below a certain amount. Windsor Chamber of Commerce understands the draw of shopping in America. Basically what we're saying is that you live in a border community, there are all sorts of great amenities uh, on the U.S. side as part of the attraction of living here. The Chamber of Commerce co-created a resolution last year about this issue. We have uh, trade agreements, we do have um, uh, legal requirements with respect to purchasing uh, goods and bringing them back into Canada. And uh, all we're suggesting is that uh, those rules uh, be enforced uh, at the border. When buying big ticket items like wedding dresses, it could end up costing you more than buying locally. Now when you factor in your uh, fees for crossing the border, lunch, gas, and especially when you have to do alterations, you have to go back and forth a few times with wedding gowns and evening gowns, it ends up costing you more. Something this shopper agrees with. When you're figuring in the duty and the exchange rate in that, it's actually not really worth it. Like this Windsor shopper, some just prefer to buy locally. I've seen a lot of stores go under um, from lack of support, and so I try to support uh, privately owned businesses first, and then I go to big chains after that. Remember when shopping stateside for less than 24 hours, there's no limit on what you can be pulled in to pay duty on. Stay over 24 hours and you have a $200 limit. Shop wisely and always be honest at the border crossing. For MediaPlex News, I'm Stacey Janzer.